Hello and welcome, this is ML Skinner and we're back with some more of the Beast and Exploration DLC of Battle Brothers. We have completed the tutorial mission and now it's time to decide what we want to do as a mercenary company. We do have a contract here, so I will look at what the contract is, but if it is a contract that keeps me in this area, I'm not going to want to take it. If it's a travel contract, I'm going to take it for sure. My main issue right now is that I do have one injured man and I definitely need more men as well so I don't really want to get engaged in combat if I can avoid it so that's the idea so let's take a look at what the contract is you come across a man leaning against a porch post he hails you down Ortwin of Kachendorf has been looking for you sellsword he's down yonder in the village communal the stranger nods towards a large building a little ways along the road I hope you do good, mercenary. The people of Kochendorf are wary of your sort, but that don't mean their hearts can't be won over. Ordwin of Kochendorf kicks his feet up on his desk, knocking an empty goblet over. The peasants are at it again, bugging me. They say the wheat fields outside of Kochendorf has been destroyed. I don't ordinarily take the fools at their word, but a few of my councilmen seem to have confirmed the news. Now I gotta do something about it. He swings a finger at you, smiling as he does it. That's where you come in. Go to the wheat fields, kill those unruly vagabonds, then report back to me. How's that sound to you? Well, this is exactly the kind of contract I didn't want to take because this is sticking around in this area. Um, but we will at least ask how many, how much he's gonna pay us. That'll be an indicator of how difficult it may be. He opens the palms of his hands. I'm tied on crowns, so before you ask, this is all I have right now. You'll get 60 crowns in advance and another 240 when the job is done. No, I do need more men. And we have that tailor here, and he costs 220 to purchase. So almost if I take this contract, it'd be like getting a free man. Well, we're going to at least ask for more money. That's the mercenary thing to do. We need to be paid more for this. Reasonable. It's 70 crowns in advance and another 260 when the job is done. All right, I'll accept it, but we're not going to make a huge amount of profit off of this particular mission. Hopefully, it's not too difficult. Um, yeah. I'll accept. So we need to secure the ruined Wee Field near Kochendorf. Now the other reason I'm doing this is because there's a ruined building here. Maybe if I do this, this will actually repair the building, making this settlement more valuable. So I think it's worth doing. So I will accept the contract. We're not going to do it right away though. We're going to go into the higher screen here. Oh, he's actually gotten cheaper. It's probably because the town likes me more. Would be my my guess now we don't want this guy because he's dumb uh we could just use him for cannon fodder but nah we'll take uh lothar here now he might not be a very good soldier but again it could just be cannon fodder okay let's see how good he is he's actually not bad uh his melee skill is pretty damn good uh he may not be very f physically fit though fatigue is pretty bad so and his morale is, is kind of terrible as well. I mean, if we just compare that to the men, other men we hired. Well, our farmer has really bad morale too. But even though he's wearing all this armor and stuff, you'll, you'll see how much better his fatigue is. It's better wearing the armor than, <laughs> than uh, this guy not wearing any. Uh, let's see our other men. I haven't really looked at this. So this is our Miller. He's not too bad. And then the uh, the mason. Yeah, all right, he's pretty good too. So the farmer is not particularly courageous. So we have to keep an eye on that. All right, so as far as arms, we could arm him fairly easily. We don't have actual armor for him. And considering we picked him up mostly as someone to just fill out the line. As a matter of fact, we may pull out Rupert because he's injured. Uh, the main effect of this injury is just the uh, pierced chest, which is really bad, honestly, with the uh, extra or the reduction in fatigue. But he's actually still pretty good. 
Uh, he might have been already uh, fairly good in that regard. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong man. Uh, yeah, 68. So that's kind of bad. We might be uh, better off just pulling him out. Because this mission we're going to do, it's not likely we're going to wait two to four days to do it. So, yeah, let's just pull him. And then we'll probably equip uh, our Taylor Lothar here with the same kind of equipment that he was uh, having. Uh, we don't have another spear, but we could easily just take this guy's spear. I wish you could just do this, but that doesn't work. Unfortunately, you have to you have to take it out of the inventory, switch to the other guy, and take it back in. I guess we might as well take this as well. I'm not going to give him the armor, because if he dies, he will lose the armor. And, I mean, he's not a bad man, though, so we kind of do want to keep him alive. His fatigue is already not looking good, though. It's below the 75 mark I usually try and aim for. It's not too far below, though. This will reduce it even further, though, by another 3. So he'd be down to 70. Well, we're going to have to do it, I think. Out of curiosity, does Taylor give him any attributes? No, it doesn't. Not too surprising. Okay. Okay. Well, he's equipped. Uh, we're going to leave Rupert aside for now. So we have pretty much the same number of men we had before. By him not being in the front line, I believe he'll heal faster as well. So that is a, a, a benefit. All right, so there's a little bit of risk in what I'm doing here because I don't know how many men I'm going to have to face. Uh, if I have to, I could wait a couple days to get him to be better. But for now, I really don't necessarily have the equipment to run uh, more men than I have right now without having to buy something. So that's fine. Okay, so we should be all good to go. Uh, we'll leave. What is our reputation with this town? So this is uh, Kotchendorf. It's the only town we know about. And they're open to us. So they have progressed beyond just like a neutral point. And that's the reason why it's improved, is because we did the, uh, the tutorial mission. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, we don't know what we're going to find here. We don't actually physically see the men that we're going to encounter. Um, all right, well, let's head over. You should follow the road. Brigands, just as you expected. Not only are they at the Wee Fields, they don't appear to give two shits about how... Out in the open they are. As your men converge on the area, the brigands lazily gather their weapons as if they'd handled men of your ilk already. Their arms. So we've got some brigand thugs and a few war dogs. Okay, that's going to be a problem. Um, we'll see how many of them there are. War dogs, as, I, as I've said before, are really not a huge threat. The problem is they have very high initiative. So they're going to be on me like right away. So we have to kill them pretty fast here. Uh, they might be hard to hit. Now, as we can see, the men I'm facing, they're not very particularly well armed. Uh, they probably will just charge me. Uh, for now, I'm going to actually wait because I'm not going to probably hit this dog. So we're just going to wait here. Uh, you are ready to go, though. 57%. Let's go ahead and try for the stab. Try for the stab. Okay, and as you see, that already did pretty serious damage to that dog. So because we're up on a hill, uh, we do have an advantage for uh, hitting here. I'm going to go after the other dog. Okay, we did get a hit. Then we'll just end turn. We don't really need to get off that hill. Uh, if I can, I'd like to get this kill. How far away are they? Two, four, six, eight. So they're not going to get on me this turn. So we've got time. Okay, dog down. Uh, because of fatigue buildup, these guys are probably going to beat me to initiative, so we should might as well just put up our spear wall now. Okay. Hopefully we can kill the dog before it gets a chance to go. Yeah, it's dead already. Uh, there's no real point in moving because we could set up a good line. Unfortunately, this guy's not going to be able to get his spear wall up in time, probably, because of the fatigue he built up from attacking. 
Um, but here, I'm just going to end my turn. Here we can put up the spear wall. Kind of prepare for these guys. Uh, so they're more likely uh, going to funnel into the middle because that's where they, they can get in safely, these two spots. If they try and go around, they're going to have to deal with the, the spear wall. So they'll, the AI will try and avoid that if they can. So let's end this guy's turn, so not to build up too much more fatigue. And this is why I waited with the crossbowmen, because now these guys are closer, they'll actually be an easier target. But at this stage, it doesn't really make any sense to step forward here, because we're we in a good defensive position. Uh, thugs are usually pretty aggressive, let's have them come to us, and not only that, we outnumber them at this point. So let's make them make the, the move here. Also, we have ranged combat weapons, they don't. Okay, let's end the turn. They also have limited shields, so a lot of them are going to be easy to hit. I think we go after the guy with armor, because we know crossbows are very effective at piercing armor. So we're going to try and hit this guy. We did hit him, and we'll reload. Okay, no, there's no reason to go at this point. We might as well just hold. We did manage to get this guy up, so we're going to put a spear wall, but then we're going to hold the rest of our turn. Now they have to deal with our spear walls. We're going to go ahead and hold. Go ahead and hold. Now they have to respond. Now it looks like what they're responding is just to hold themselves. Now what happens when a uh, spear wall is up is your man gets to attack when they move in. As you saw there with the first blow, I hit him. So when you hit, you actually drive them back. Now the second time he moved in, I missed, so he stayed in, put. Now, in place. Because he's broken the spear wall, because he was able to get in, this spear wall, although it says it's up, is not up anymore. So now a man here could move right into this space and he would not get an attack because he, this guy has already broken the spear wall. There are traits you can pick up, or perks I should say, uh, that would allow that to not to be the case where your spear wall is more effective. But in this case, that's the way it works. All right, so now this guy's going to block my shot at, at, he, at him, so I can't continue to shoot him. So the guy that's going to be easy to hit is this guy here. Fortunately, I missed, but it was worth a shot. See, as I said, he moved in there freely. And the spear roll did not affect him. But at this moment, the only uh, these are the only two spaces they can move into. So if we put up a spear wall here and then hold our action, that will remain the case. So again, he's going to use his shield wall there to try and get in. And we're going to, of course, poke him back and prevent him. So, uh, another spear wall and hold. This is a very effective thing to do against animals in particular because they kind of blindly move in and attack uh, your, your formation. They don't, they don't try and be clever like these guys are with the, the shield wall thing and trying to break the, the spears. Uh, they'll just charge in and they'll take the spears. So, that's where spears can be very valuable if you can put up a spear wall like this. Uh, so we're just going to impale. The other action we can do is repel, which is to knock somebody back. And although that has its applications at the moment, just stabbing guys is going to be the more valuable thing for us. And we just killed that guy. Now this uh, space is still open. So this man here, he can just move into that spot and act. So we can expect that to happen. Or perhaps uh, this guy might do it first because he acts first. So we'll see. But uh, for now, this guy might as well just end his turn. Now, because I held my action, I still get to go. So I can go ahead and poke at this guy if I want to. I can't hold my action again, so that's going to be it. It's either poke at him or don't. Now, I may actually want to do a shield bash here because I think if I knock him back, the uh, the spear wall gets put back into place because I did that this turn. I actually don't know if that's true or not. What's my chance of hitting with the, the... Okay, it's really low, so I'm better off just uh, hitting him with my spear, which I think has about the same attack chance. Okay, we did land. And because of his lack of armor, uh, it was pretty effective blow. Now, this is one of those situations where you have to make a choice. Do you step in and attack, knowing that the enemy could step in on you anyway? But by doing so, you're going to allow more of the enemy to get in here, because if I stay as is... Only one more man can get in here without having to brave the spear walls. But if I step forward, now I'm letting another man get in here. And I'll be surrounded, making them have an easier time hitting me. That's good reason why formations are important. At best, only two men are going to be able to get in front of me. So they're, 
they're not going to build up a huge bonus. But if I move here, they could surround me, and then their hits are going to be more and more likely. So in this case, I think I really have to make that choice of do I want to move up or not. We know that they have all held, well, these two guys have held their action. I think we wait this turn. Just be patient. Okay, so this guy has held his action. Uh, this guy still has a shield all up, so he's going to be hard to hit. Um, but that's not too bad. I don't think it's worth uh, going with the stun, because if we hit, it will do devastating damage. Yeah, so now we've just made him flee. And what that is, you know, done also is it's dropped the, the shield wall. So now he's even easier to hit. Unfortunately, we missed, though. Okay, and he did brave the... Oh, ow. So now they can get in here, but they, they decided not to. Well, I'm going to go ahead and move the shield, uh, the spear wall up. So that I can move the rest of my uh, formation here. This guy took a blow to the head. Pretty serious blow. Uh, we have a uh, broken nose. The so minus five fatigue recovery, so I'm only going to get ten back from here on out. Uh, there is a good reason, though, to just stab this guy. Unfortunately, I missed. Okay. So this guy is going to retreat. So we might as well just shoot this guy in the face if we can. Okay. Good hit. We managed to get a uh, serious wound there. Um, I can poke down on this guy. I kind of want to wait, though, because there may be better opportunities here. Because if this guy uh, moves oh, in here, I could move down and then stab him. Um, this guy's already fleeing, so yeah, I think that's the right move. Thankfully, the shield blocked that. This guy could have died this turn. Uh, because this guy is fleeing, he doesn't have his own control, so I can actually ignore it. Can this guy get in? Two, four, six. He can. Uh, I don't want too many men on this guy because he might die. So I'm going to get aggressive here uh, to try and save him. Uh, I'm going to move past the guy that's running away. And I'm just going to tie this guy up so he can't go in and, and try and kill this guy. Unfortunately, this guy gets a turn before. Uh, and if he does land, he might kill him. Um, so that's going to be it. Okay, we got lucky there. Ah, no, he's dead. Well, he didn't last long, did he? <laughs> well, that's the uh, the plight of a, uh, a mercenary in this game. Again, this guy's already retreating, so there's no reason to uh, go after him. He, when he tries to retreat, will get he'll get a bunch of attack of opportunities against him. So let's try and kill these guys that are in front of me. So there's one blow. Okay. I really do need to move down. Um, because if I don't, my, uh, my crossbowman is, uh, possibly gonna get attacked. So, we're just gonna move the line down to respond to the current situation. And we'll try and stab this guy in the face, because he's got a weapon that could do serious damage here. Okay. Face stabbed. Alright. So, I'm gonna move in here. That has, uh, lowered this guy's morale. We'll go after this guy. Again, we don't need to go after this guy because attack of opportunities will happen on him when he tries to run. So, stab. Now we made that guy run. And there was the attack of opportunity. Now everybody's running. So, we can just step forward here and stab this guy before he gets a chance to run. We are going to run them down rather than say it's over because we're going to get a bunch of attack of opportunities. Now, I'm not, not going to blow through ammo. Uh, so, instead, I'm just going to hold my action. And we're going to try and hack these guys down before they get to go anywhere. Come on, you can land. There we go. Uh, go ahead and give this guy another poke. He's dead. Um, with this guy, I may try and pick up some stuff. I, I, I might lose this armor. Uh, which is kind of the downside of having that guy come in here and die. Uh, I'm not sure I can pick it up, though, because it's not like I can carry too much. So hopefully I do salvage it off the battlefield. So yeah, I'll just step forward and stab. 
If his armor was better than the one I had, I could probably swap out for it, but actually that was the weakest armor I had. Uh, you know, the crossbowman could come in and pick that up, because it's better than what he's currently wearing. Unfortunately, I think this guy's going to die before that happens. I will move to take advantage of that, though. Okay, turn. Let's just finish him off. More. There we go. So the question is... Uh, yeah, he actually did die. When the guy drops, he doesn't necessarily die. Uh, there's kind of a roll that happens uh, to determine how bad the injury is. Uh, a couple different outcomes can happen. It's usually either going to be a permanent injury or they just die like this. And in this case, he's dead. So we did get his armor back, though, and it was untouched. Now, the uh, head covering we had, that was destroyed because the guy hit him right in the head. So... It's unfortunate that he didn't live beyond the first mission he was in, but again, that is the uh, lot of a uh, mercenary in this game, a battle brother, if you will. Okay, let's uh, leave. You look over the battle and nod, happy to still have a head upon your shoulders, except for the one guy that's dead. Uh, with which to nod with. Time to return to Ortwin of Kutchendorf. All right, that's taken care of. Now, on the upside, we don't have to pay him his day's salary. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to look on the bright side, but we didn't get very much profit there because it it cost two hundred ten to hire him, and we're gonna only get uh, another two sixty here when we go back in. So we got about what one twenty in profit. In any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. This is Mouse Gunner signing out.